Um, the Honorable Minister John Paul Adel, thank you so much for the honor of joining us here at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy in Berlin. And uh, thank you also for your keynote speech you gave uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, we want to take a little bit of time to ask you your opinions and ask you a few questions on some salient issues and go a little bit deeper into the talk that you gave. Sure. Um, thank you very much. But first, I'd just like to know, uh, how can small states ensure that their voice is heard within the global community? Well, I think the first thing is that small states have to recognize uh, we don't have all the same, the, all the means that a bigger state does. You know, we, uh, we don't have, uh, you know, huge trade deals to offer as incentives. Uh, we don't have a huge military. Um, and so we recognize that. But that can also be a big plus because we also come in to a negotiation without any baggage. We walk into a room and it means really we're a state that's just there to engage. And, uh, and a state such as Seychelles, we have to use the attributes that we do have. So being a beautiful island-based country, tourism being at the core of what we do. So know your attributes. Secondly, be efficient. You're small, but use that smallness to your advantage and that means um, being very nimble, being able to um, uh, being able to adopt uh, positions on key issues very quickly, um, being able to consult very widely and high uh, uh, and sort of in the in the level necessary, and and also build consensus because we don't have that baggage. It's sometimes easier for us to approach um, other states, other like-minded states, and create partnerships. So I think that's how how role state, uh, small states can really uh, get their voices heard in the international community. A very interesting thought. Uh, how has the Seychelles implemented cultural diplomacy as a means to also cross continental cooperation? Well, first of all, Seychelles, I think the formation of our country is, uh, is fairly special in the sense that we're, we're a country that doesn't, didn't never have an indigenous population. So Seychelles was born out of immigration. Uh, and an immigration which was not imposed on anyone else. Everyone came from different places. We have a monument in our capital of three birds, one representing the three continents of which, from which we were built. One representing Africa, one representing Asia, one representing Europe. The three continents which then, um, um, from which our own population uh, is built. And so we see our own culture as being one which is open, which is reaching out, and which is about building bridges uh, with other cultures. Uh, some of the things that we, we have actually done, um, we organize every, uh, every uh, beginning uh, of the year an international carnival in Seychelles. Uh, now most countries have a carnival for their own culture. We have an international carnival. So in this carnival we have uh, representatives from states from around the world that bring their culture to celebrate it in Seychelles. And in addition to that we invite um, one of the largest groupings of uh, international tourism press to this carnival. And what it does is that it actually creates uh, free marketing for all of the floats in the parade. So we have a lot of tourism authorities from the African continent that bring their, their dancers and their, and their performers to our carnival because it also gives them uh, column inches and, and, and visibility in, in the tourism press. And we encourage this. This is what we this is what we want. We want to build uh, partnerships. Um, tourism is a, one of the ways in which, particularly Africa, can really uh, accelerate the creation of wealth. But to do so, it's all about communication. Um, it's all about uh, building partnerships, and that's what we want to do. That's just an example uh, of of how we've used uh, cultural diplomacy uh, to build sort of those links. Uh, what has been the role of small states in building a global community within the past decade? Well, I think a lot of uh, small states have uh, been able to, as I say, said before, be consensus builders, and in a way which is maybe easier than, than other states. I mean, larger states, there's often a fear that they, that they have an agenda. Personally, I actually know quite a lot of the time they don't, but there is that worry. Um, uh, or, or there is that, uh, you know, there are conspiracy theories and so on. So I think we can often help to build a consensus and just say, well, this makes sense and uh, let's try and work towards that. And there, there have been some really practical examples. I mean, recently 
um, the United Nations adopted a, a landmark treaty on, on the trade in small weapons, um, the, the uh, Arms Trade Treaty. Uh, and that was very much built by small states that, that were not weapons producers uh, and that were not weapons traders, but which recognized the threat that, the, that handguns and so on, um, the proliferation in Africa, for example. And this was built by a coalition of small states, but done in such a way that we could get the consensus of, of larger states. So I think that's one example. Um, I think in climate change as well, uh, again, smaller states not necessarily being the biggest emitters, um, but having the most to lose, uh, and able to, to build a sense of global community in the sense that it's a global responsibility to act. Global community doesn't just mean uh, something wishy-washy where you know we're all uh, sharing values. Yes, we do. It is a question about sharing values, but it's about a responsibility to act in the right way. Uh, how, have, how has your country's transnational uh, relations evolved over the last century? Well, Seychelles, uh, um, we have obviously by being uh, small, um, there, there has been a tendency perhaps for some countries to see uh, Seychelles as just an extension of their own uh, foreign policies. You know, we, we are in a geostrategic position in the Indian Ocean. So during the Cold War, we, we had both the Soviet Union and both the United States uh, uh, you know, uh, basically vying for influence. Our position has always been, as long as people come in transparently and, and talking about mutual benefit and, and delivering mutual benefit, we will cooperate with everybody who comes with the, the approach of partnership. So even today, the Cold War is over, but even today we, we, we are very, uh, we put a lot of importance, for example, on, on uh, maritime security. We've had threats, of, threats from piracy uh, linked to the instability in Somalia. Uh, we put a lot of importance on maritime security. And we have partnerships uh, in terms of uh, patrolling of our, our, our area, our region, with countries as diverse as India, China, um, regional countries from within Africa, including South Africa, including Kenya, including Tanzania, um, and countries from further afield, including the United States, including NATO, including the European Union. And uh, we just believe that every country has a stake. Maritime security is not something which is easily done by one state because we're talking about vast areas. So we need to bring as many partners uh, uh, together. And I think Seychelles, we have relatively successfully done so. Um, and uh, we are very pragmatic. You know, we are only 90,000 people but we have 1.3 million square kilometers of ocean. If we tried to do this ourselves, we just put everybody in the Navy, and we can't do that. So we have to work with partners. So the necessity um, has uh, uh, led us to build those, those partnerships. So the evolution of our, our partnerships has been very much, uh, in the security sense, been defined by our maritime space. And we are open because of that. Um, and uh, and the uh, and in terms of economy, we have also been open. And so essentially, even in terms of economy, our relationships are always based on uh, mutual benefit and openness. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, thank you for your time. It's thank been you an so honor and a privilege to have you here. Uh, we believe you need to head off to the airport. I take it you're flying back home. Yes, I might miss my flight. Well, <laughs> a very safe journey, Pat. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your time. You. Thank you.